Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up and this wrap ups for Monday, the 5th of April, 2021. We're at 645 p.m. Central Time. A big day in the stock market early follow through tonight. Now, what do I teach you so often? You get a big day on a Monday in a market, typically a stock market. That's where the rule really is. And you often get a Tuesday reversal or an attempt at it. So be aware of that. Markets do that. That comes from the Stock Traders Almanac. Yale Hirsch wrote it many years ago. Uh, it's something I've paid att attention to, watched it for years, and uh, I believe in it, okay? I find that it works more times than it doesn't. You have to define what big is, and we'll get to that in a minute. The uh, metal market's up a little bit tonight. Dollar's been weak. We're going back and forth right now in the currencies. You were down hard in the energies. As the market's realizing OPEC wants to produce more oil as the market has come to terms with the fact that it's going to be a little bit here before Europe is able to take the oil that it needs because of the COVID lockdown. You've got that going on, other parts of the world too. Now the good news is as America and other places like us finish up with our vaccines, and believe me, we're nowhere near it, but I already saw tonight the state of Indiana is telling Illinois people, you know, we'll waive the requirements. If you come over the border, you can get your vaccine if you fall into their categories. Well, that's that's a sign that things are getting better. If you looked uh, at the movies and you saw that uh, what is it, King Kong versus Godzilla did, did nearly 46 million. While it's not numbers that we'd love to see in the 200 million range, it is a big number. People are dying to get back to normal. So the brave ones went out and did this. Okay, that is a good sign. So that's what you're dealing with in the financial markets. We're looking at the glass now filling up. Things are getting even better and better. The market doesn't even pay attention. We have reports that come out with February data. They don't mean anything to market. March data does because we're only at April 5th. But this market's very forward looking right now. As we look at the S&P, we're at an all-time high. We're up another for the week. Can you believe it? 1.56% at this point. You can see you're at all-time highs where the market fought its battle. Not too hard to talk about. We were talking about it right here. Now, that breakout, you know, you can measure, just to give you an idea, take your chart, figure out the high from here, the low, grab it and pull it over. So you just subtract from this number, the low here, and add it to it. It's one way of getting an objective to the upside. You'll be surprised about that. It's very interesting. It's called a, it's called a reverse head and shoulder mini formation, okay? And mini because it's not the cleanest and go that long, but I find that formation gives me ideas. And out of those ideas, I see higher lows, higher highs. That is certainly bullish. The market is over the 18-day average and has been on that track now for a while here, certainly the past week and a half or so. Where the negative comes in is where's the resistance, and you're over the Bollinger Band. So if you and I step back and we look at this market, on Thursday of last week, you finished at 4010 and the Bollinger Band was 4004, so day one over it. You were clearly over it today. That's your second day. Today could be the third. So you're getting a bit rich. You only spend 5% of the time over an upper or lower Bollinger Band. And with that, I have a rule of thumb. It's just a rule of thumb. I take away one percentage point for each consecutive day over it. That does not mean magically on the sixth day it has to crash. In fact, if it's over at five days in a row, it's telling you a story, how strong it is. But typically, you get up like these and you start getting your reversals. You're about at that time frame, so it's something I watch. Then I look at what the slow stochastics have done. Well, you can't include tonight because we don't know where uh, Tuesday's gonna finish up, so we get rid of that. But we know where Monday finished, we know Thursday, and we know the day before. Ah, you weren't embedded there. So in order for the market to embed, it needs to get today, both of these numbers closing over 80. Right now they look that way, but again, a strong Monday, when you had gains of 57 points, often leads to a Tuesday reversal,
You're over the Bollinger Band. So the question from my mind is number one, I let it embed or it doesn't embed. It's, a, it's overbought that part I realize. And I'll see what happens. If it embeds, then what I teach in my enhanced Bollinger Band course. Remember, just go to our website, www.irapstein.com. Under the word research, the course is there with education. You hit education. I forgot which, which area we put it on. It might be under the education part. And it, it's classic cases of it. I'm not going to tell you what to do. That's in the course. In the NASDAQ, overbought as can be, over the upper Bollinger Band. So not even close to embedding, just overbought. Hit some upside targets, we'll see if it can hold them or pull back from here. In the Dow, fully embedded reading. You can see how the market's working here. And by the way, this is not a smudge. The 200-day average is just coming up now on this chart. So I've got my 200 days worth of data plus on closing basis. And remember, futures, this just became the lead month. So you've got this with higher lows? No, you got a lower low, higher high. You hit the upper Bollinger Band. That's where I think pros took money off the table. From there, I think they'll continue to buy on the pullbacks now as long as the red line stays over 80. When it loses that, then I'll have a different game plan. So I think they took some money off. I don't think they got out of all their positions. In the Russell, the market's got an uptrend not embedded, higher lows, higher highs. The problem is if, if you buy this market at 22.50, let's call it, you're gonna put a stop 100 points lower, that's an awful big risk. So while you ended a downtrend, I think the market needs to tighten up those ranges before you're gonna attract the big money into it. In the VIX, what I said last week, was if you go down and you hit the lower Bollinger Band, I'll be surprised if you don't see that the pros write some puts, seeing if the market will return to the 18-day average. Now, what's fascinating today is that with a big gain in the stock market, the VIX was still up 3%. That's, that's impressive. Uh, I would have thought it was going to be sharply lower again. So maybe the market's got a certain element of people that are seeing what I am, and they're saying, ah, oh, we might get a bounce in that. Maybe the stock market's just getting a little bit ahead of itself. I mean, you're not going to keep discounting the Friday jobs data report again tomorrow. In the bond market, you've got a pattern of higher lows, higher highs. So you're out of your downtrend. Now, whether this thing has any legs, I don't know. What I do see happening for the first time, notice how when you fell, the slope of the Bollinger Band was coming down. All of a sudden, it might be narrowing in. This could be a consolidation phase, which I think will ultimately lead to a test of uh, the lows again to see if the market can add some yield or not. But that's right now, if you're to do anything, the trend's up. You have higher lows, higher highs. At this moment, the market support is 155.17. That could be where the pros are buying. Their stop would have to be way under here. They got a $2,000 risk. I don't know that they'll want to take that or not. And wherever that upper Bollinger Band comes in is about all that I'd look for on this early rally. In the 10-year note, different story. Still in the bear camp, lower highs, lower lows, oversold though. So could it get back to that 18-day average to fight a battle? Yeah, it could. In the dollar index, a signal that, ah, oh, maybe this whole rally ended today for a bit. I think that's it. And it was strange because I woke up this morning and saw that Goldman Sachs had put out in their notes that uh, one of their trades of the year, which was short the dollar index, they were abandoning that trade. Uh, and the reason, perfect sense, the COVID situation for them, their thought process didn't unfold in Europe the way they thought it would. And therefore the dollar is winning because of the economic data. We have the COVID, we got higher interest rates occurring. Will it continue that way? That's where the caveat comes in from them. They believe that once Europe gets its footing with this, that game can change again. And I, I'm, I'm fully in their camp, except I have been bullish this market much longer than they have. Frankly, from down here is when I saw the low uh, form in the market. 
And if you go to your weekly chart, you get a picture of that. that. That's all I can tell you. Now, for the first time, I'm getting a signal that you probably want to come down and challenge the 200-day average, and then we'll see what it can do. If you can't close under that in the 18 at 92.35, just a correction. But I do think you're going to get some selling from the pros here. Stops over these highs to see if they can get the market down into those numbers. I don't know that I'm right or wrong on that. In the June euro currency, it's the flip-flop of the dollar. It flipped around. Now, it's saying, I think, that it wants to get back up into the 118.60 zone to figure out what it's going to do next. So, it, there's a difference between ending a short-term downtrend, or, a lo excuse me, a longer-term downtrend, and starting a shorter-term uptrend when you're under the 18-day average of closes. I'll call it corrections in both the dollar and the euro, but not necessarily trend changes. The British pound looks to me like it's made a trend change. You've got the higher lows, the higher highs. The market fought a battle until today right here. You can see it's the 18-day average, and it, it, with authority closed over, and it's not giving it up. So I would say that this market's making a statement. Now, it is plenty of risk here. If you were to buy the market back at the 18-day average, your stop has to be, in my opinion, under 137.09, under the most recent low, and that would break the pattern of higher lows, higher highs. That's a heck of a lot of risk. So I think some traders will look to see what goes on. I don't know what happened to this chart. It's Bitcoin. And this is the June contract, higher lows, higher highs, still bullish but overbought. Sorry, that's my fault. This is June Brent. I'm sure that's, yeah, it is Bitcoin. This is June Brent versus June WTI crude. I wanted to make them the same months now. It's time that you can do that. And as you can see, we got as high as 360. We're at 347. But this market's trying to stay over what I call that 18-day average of closes. When it does that, it favors Brent over WTI. When we go to the June crude, and this is the, uh, the, the, this should be the Brent BZM. You've got higher lows, higher highs, under the 18-day average. Not a lot going on. Had a heck of a break today. This is an outside day up, and we had that on Thursday. Now, take a look at today. You took that out. What, where's my rule? My rule is when you take out the low of an outside day up, there's a strong preponderance that the market is going to make a run for the lower Bollinger Band or the closest moving average. In this case, it's 6016. I'd be wrong if you made a high over Thursday's high. In WTI crude, you have a pattern of lower highs. You have uh, now lower highs, lower lows. If we come back to Thursday's action, is this Thursday? It is. You did not have an outside day. You just had a higher high and then you broke through. So this is a downtrend. Where might the market go? Well, if it wants to break, it can break further. It's oversold. I don't think you're attracting a lot of sellers until you either embed or do something else. So while the break is there and you've been under the 18-day average, it's been a difficult market. This was a corrective rally and no more than that. You're still basically in a downtrend, but a hard one to trade because of the oversold. Gasoline is in a fist fight at the 18-day average of closes. Has not figured out which way to go with it. You got a higher high and lower and low. I, I don't mind telling you I have a big bias to the upside because as you saw the movie theaters go on, I've already talked to friends over Easter that have these monster campers. So my friend was telling me that uh, you normally don't book this far out. He wanted to go to Colorado. They gave up. They can't even find a site. <laughs> They're that booked, all these sites. That gives you an idea that people are, are looking to get going. And he's not leaving in April. He wants to go to Colorado in the summer. The dates he wanted, which were a good part of June and July, he said it's, it's too difficult. So you put those things, you listen to them, you learn from them, and you figure out where might you go. Maybe you'll want to go and take this enhanced course. Go to our website under the word education. I kept saying research. It's under education or call my staff. I think you'll find in 13 chapters of video, each one about seven minutes long, you can learn a lot. I'm I. Rapstein. You have a good day. Welcome. I'm I. Rapstein, and I'm here to talk about my enhanced 
Bollinger Band course. Now many of you have taken my regular charting course and if not you might think you know something about Bollinger Bands. As you know Bollinger Bands are an algorithm designed to keep the market trading within it 95 percent of the time and on a chart it will offer on the top part resistance on the bottom support and the idea is the market will travel within them. We know that sometimes it latches onto that band, goes up or goes down. Well, how do you play with that? Can you pyramid the positions off that type of thinking? Well, I've applied all three of these into 13 different videos that teach you my concept of it. And from that concept, you're able to work with weekly charts and or daily charts. The 13 videos, each about seven minutes long. The idea here is not to put you in school forever, but to teach. Now, if you haven't tried my complete futures research, I throw that in as well. Whether you've tried this or not, I think it's worth taking a look at. I think you're going to learn something from there. That research, by the way, covers twice daily market updates for you and access to what I call window envelope numbers, which I think are very important when looking at these Bollinger Bands. The next part is a trial to our charting software, so you can make your charts look the same way that I do. It's that simple. Where do you go with it and how do you get all this? It's simple. You go to our website, www.iraepstein.com. If you go to the word education, everything you need is answered there. You can also call my staff. They'll be happy to help you get set up. I'm Ira Epstein on the road to your education.